Nietzsche and Individualism, article in the Metaphysical Mag Magazine, 1900. Friedrich Nietzsche's fame is constantly growing, though these ten years he has written nothing and has lived in an insane asylum. The reason for this is that he is an embodiment of a fundamental principle that he represents much of the essential nature of the modern spirit. The first is his teaching of individualism in opposition to collectivism, and the second is his gentleman morality, in contrast with what he calls slave morality. The latter is really a necessary result of the former. As an individualist, Nietzsche is in company with Fichte and most ro romanticists, and behind them all lies idealism. An idealist is necessarily an individualist and of aristocratic notions. His aristocracy is, however, not the same as oppression and tyranny. It means higher type and profounder recognition of duty. Nietzsche condemns democracy by which he understands the vulgar equal-making of today. That kind of universality which is attained by leveling downward, but not upward. He says that the kind of democracy has always been the downward steps of a degenerating power. Against democracy he places individual will, instinct, and command. He is even not afraid to say, we may be anti-liberal, even to hardness and cruelty. He admires the lordly nature. He is lord, who has power to realize his will. He is a slave who is weak. He looks upon Napoleon as a lord, and the criminal type is the, the type of the strong man under unfavorable conditions. Notions of this kind place him in strong antagonism to Christianity. He hates Christianity and calls its morals slave morals. The true man is the individualist, and Nietzsche calls him the overman. Nietzsche is in his own eyes the hero of the ideal man and his leader. He has dreamed himself into the world beyond good and evil. He has risen to the state of the overman, acts lordly morals, and is the embodiment of the spirit of Zarathustra. There is, however, no system in Nietzsche's writing. They look like mosaics of his mind. His teachings find their expression and solution in the personality of the philosopher and man. He is so strong a man in our day that the culture history of modern times cannot be written without constant reference to his influence, and this is especially true as regards the continent. The ultra-conservative and government journal the Kreuzzeitung has gone to the extreme of placing his writing on the index of forbidden reading. This shows how truly he is the most representative leader of that movement of contemporary thought which Huxley called the New Reformation. Alexander Vernet represented individualism inside the church lines, and the work he did was as well defined and powerfully prosecuted as that of Nietzsche. He antagonized with great force the leveling social pantheistic tendencies of church life and maintained that the individual, not the collective mass of members, was the object of salvation and was the one that bore the image. Society, or the so-called social unit, is only an arrangement, a conglomeration, like the ocean and the earth, of undeveloped monads and is not self-centered nor self-directive. Society, or the social unit, exists for the benefit of the individual and not vice versa. Soren Kierkegaard was another man inside the church who also fought for the rights of the individual. His attacks were directed against Hegelian universalism and ministers who get a living from the state in return for their offices and reducing citizens to obedience. All of these men refer to Socrates as their teacher and the father of individualism. In our day, when so many false movements are set a-going and when effeminacy and weakness of character is so prevalent among those tired of the old order of things, it is imperative that the doctrine of individualism and self-reliance should be taught and should again get prominence. 
It is a doctrine thoroughly Anglo-Saxon and congenial to Americans. It is the force that has made man what he is, and it is the creator of human worth, or that something which gives us the dominion of both heaven and earth. Under the form of character, it is, as said Charles Sumner, everything. It makes the man timber out of that which has built the kingdom of peace, truth, and love. It is the secret of a great heart and the oil in the lamp of true being. It is the moral order of the universe.